Network presents Football Time. Hey, hey, and welcome to the Football Time Show. NFL Week 9 is upon us. And another week in the books and uh, another, let's call it, interesting week of uh, gambling uh, in the books as well. So, Achilles Reign is with us as always. Let's talk this NFL season out a little bit before we get into the uh, football games. Um, I think we can definitively say there are three good football teams, (laughs) Bills, Chiefs, and we'll throw the Eagles in there, though probably maybe a line below what we think the Bills and and Chiefs are. But uh, 20, I don't know, eight others. I feel like are basically all the same football team. (laughs) Maybe one's really bad at defense. Maybe one's really bad at offense. Maybe 25 of them have terrible coaches. I don't know. Um, What do you make of this football season? Because quite honestly, you could not tell me from somebody I rank four, let's call it Cowboys, let's call it, you know, I don't know, Vikings, I guess we have to throw in there. Uh, You couldn't tell me they were so much better than, let's just say, Carolina, who legitimately is playing for first place in the division uh, tomorrow with the Atlanta Falcons. So uh, how are you putting this season together right now? Because it is very difficult to gamble, I will say that. I think, you know, difficult is an understatement just based off what we've had this season. I mean, the roller coaster has been up and down. Uh, We get a streak of unders that are constantly hitting. We get a streak of overs. uh, Players not performing up to to par. Uh, I mean, honestly, I I think that if we were to sit here and in the beginning of the season and talk about which team would be leading the division at this point, you know, we kind of had our issues about Kansas City. We weren't sure exactly where they were going to end up. We still had them winning that division, but we thought it'd be a lot more competitive. I, I, other than the Bills and the Chiefs here, you couldn't tell me that any other team in second or third place in the division couldn't be leading their divisions respectively. It's just been a crazy season and it's really unexpected, but I, I kind of like it. Yeah, uh, other than I think some bad football is being played. And uh, let's talk Thursday night. Uh, You know, Ravens looked pretty solid, but uh, with the elephant in the room, uh, Tampa Bay's really bad. Um, Awful versus Carolina, uh, just brutal offensively, and it wasn't much better. They they did at least get a touchdown, and then they tacked on a fake one uh, there in the last 30 seconds to uh, pretend like the game was closer than it was. But um, what do you make of Tampa Bay here? It, I, it, you can't rule them out because, like I said, Carolina and Atlanta are playing for a tie for first place tomorrow. And uh, the Saints are also uh, who, in every normal circumstance, you'd probably write off and uh, start saying uh, it's probably time to, you know, round things up and go for a draft pick are also one game out of first place. So what do you make of Tampa here? It, it, is this ship going to keep sinking or is it at least going to pull up and uh, start at least treading water here? Because it's been a bad three weeks. Well, I can tell you this much. If I had the answer to that question, I'd probably be working an NFL sideline right now Uh, because it really I I don't understand. I thought that the return of Godwin, him getting back to 100 percent health would, uh, you know, help this this deep this offense out. Now, I know that they don't have Gronk and even though he wasn't the same Gronk as old. He was still a big body, a guy you had to account for, a guy who opened things up, you know, on the outside because you had to focus more uh, of your de- uh, defensive help to the uh, middle of the field. It, you know, I know that he's he's not there, but he really wasn't the Gronk of old, so I don't understand. I thought getting Godwin back, having you know Evans' big body on the side on the outside, uh, and then Godwin in the slot, I thought that would really kind of get them going. Uh, the defense, I don't think was as much of a question mark, although after this last Thursday night game, um, I think maybe we got to start questioning that a little bit, but uh, I I just don't know what the answer is. I'll be honest with you. I don't know. I I thought that 
uh, maybe it's the head coach. I mean, that's really other than Antonio Brown not being there anymore. It's really the 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 biggest you know change to this offense has been the uh, the head coach. It's he's no longer calling the plays down there. Yeah, I, I don't know what to make of it. It uh, throws everything for a loop. Basically, everything is for a loop. So uh, we're going to dive back in and uh, sort of try to handicap uh, this week's <laughs> games. So uh, what better way to start out than uh, out in London with the uh, Denver Broncos, who continue to be uh, terrible, including last week. Uh, Brent Rippon was not the answer at quarterback. Uh, I looked mostly the exact same as it's looked uh, all season long. Defense plays pretty well. Uh, offense can't do anything whatsoever. Uh, Jacksonville uh, continued their trend of basically leading up into the point where it's a fourth and one. They decide to go for it on their end of the field. Um, do not get it, of course. And uh, the Giants come down and score and take the lead. Uh, football game over. Uh, Jacksonville two and a half. You know, uh, their numbers say they play well. They rack up a lot of yards. They also somehow manage to turn the ball over and uh, do not get fourth and ones when they need to. So uh, how are you handicapping Denver Broncos, Jacksonville Jaguars here? <laughs> I'll be honest with you, this Denver team, I don't think uh, Russell Wilson being in the game or not uh, is going to really affect much of what they do. They're just not that good. I don't know if it's synchronicity. I don't know what it is. But they're just not clicking, and it's a bit of a shock, especially when you look at um, all the individual pieces on that team. It seems like a team that was poised to at least make a run for at least a playoff spot, uh, and and now it seems to to be more of a struggle. Can they just stay consistent? Can they win a few games in a row? And I don't have the answer to that one either. But I think Jacksonville is a little bit more of a conundrum in this one. Um, they started off the season really hot, uh, had a lot of naysayers uh, kind of you know jumping ship and 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 kind of coming to their aid and their defense. And over the last few weeks, it just they haven't looked like they did at the beginning of the year. Now that could be uh, you know teams and coordinators kind of catching up to your game plan and your play style, which we all expect. But I don't think that we expected – it's not a huge drop-off. Don't get me wrong. They're still having a good season based off what they did last year. Uh, so I don't want to take that away from them. But based off the first couple of weeks, I expected them to be in a much better position at this point in the season. So a little shocking, to to, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know what to expect. I will say I'm basically just pot committed here. So uh, I'm going to ride the Jacksonville Jaguars once again. And uh, – hope at some point uh they do cover and win because I, I figured at some point they'd be getting plus once again so i wouldn't have to <laughs> take them as favorites but uh somehow they keep coming up uh, across teams who are even crappier and uh finding a way to lose those games so i got jacksonville jaguars minus two uh i i couldn't give you a real science to it uh other than their offense moves the ball. Their defense gets pressure on the quarterback. Uh, they just basically they make stupid plays. Uh, I believe they had a fumble in the red zone last week. Uh, I think they got stopped on fourth and uh, whatever uh, uh, in the red zone. And then, of course, I talked about it on fourth and one up four uh, on their own to end of the field. For some reason, they thought it was a good idea to go for it, uh, though the New York Giants basically hadn't driven down the field the whole freaking game whatever uh you know they're at least putting themselves in position to win they aren't taking the wins but uh, i'm just gonna ride jacksonville uh minus two here anything you like in this one uh, i've got a couple of plays here uh it's a little concerning though you know when i'm looking at uh the the metrics for both of these teams denver third and sacks fifth and pressure rate uh eighth and tackle for a loss first and yards allowed per play uh jacksonville for the flip side uh, 15th in pressure rate, 14th in turnovers, 14 in percentage of drives ending in the score. So looking at those metrics, especially in a neutral side game, um, it leaves me a little worried, but I got a couple plays here. I got uh, Jacksonville minus two and a half. Uh, you got, I got that little hook. You didn't. Yeah. Uh, and my last one here is I know that it's, it's really hard to score on Denver, especially on the ground, but I think that now uh, Etienne, now that he's basically the yeah. man there, uh, as explosive as he is uh, on any given play, this is the kind of guy that can have uh, 10 carries for 47 yards, and one of those is a 45-yard touchdown. So um, I'm going to take him on an anytime touchdown to minus 120 and kind of hope that uh, we get we get lucky there. 
Yeah, I, I got one other play other than the Jacksonville minus two. Uh, Russell Wilson, rush yards under 12 and a half. Uh, I, he has a quote-unquote bad hamstring, uh, but, uh, you know, Calis Not if you ask the pilot. Calis not if you ask the pilot. on the plane or not. I'm going to take the <laughs> under-rushing yards, uh, you know, uh, just based on if he really does have a bad hamstring. I, I don't foresee him taking off, and uh, he hasn't been taking off anyway, so uh, I, I'm doubling down on the theory that he's not going to take off that much. All right, uh, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, Pittsburgh versus Philadelphia, 10.5 point spread here. Uh, I, I'm not going to lie, I was a no-go on this. Uh, I guess Pittsburgh was spunky last week a little bit. Uh, Dolphins got up 13-0, and it, it looked like they sort of packed it in uh, a little bit there. And then, you know, nerve-wracking, but I don't think they were ever too worried about Kenny Pickett driving down for the game-winning score. Eagles coming off a bye. Uh, but 10.5 just seems a little bit too much for uh, me on this one. I do have an alt-line parlay, I, I will say, to cover a blowout circumstance, but uh, Philadelphia in the second half of these games just hasn't seemed to really want to push that blowout factor, so I'm staying away from the 10.5, but uh, any love on this one for either side on you? Uh, I do have a few plays on this one. Uh, just looking at the, the stats for both of these teams here, Pittsburgh 28th overall defense, 22nd in points per game, 29th pass defense, 18th in rush. Uh, you know, flip it over to Philadelphia, fourth overall defense, fourth in points per game, fifth passing, 12th rush. Uh, so a pretty good defense. Now, a lot of that has to do with the fact that they haven't really played an elite team, uh, one of the two elite teams in the league. Uh, but, you know, they've been doing they've been taking care of business. So you got to give them props there. Uh, I'll give you my place here for this uh, Pittsburgh Philly game. I've got A.J. Brown anytime touchdown at plus 100, you know. 24th in targets, 7th in red zone targets. Uh, so there's a good chance there. Um, Jalen Hurts, over 48 and a half rushing yards at minus 115. Again, I mentioned uh, Pittsburgh, just a little bit low, a little bit worse in the middle of the pack when it comes to protecting the run. And you know that Jalen Hurts is going to run the ball. Um, I got Sanders here, anytime touching at plus 105. And I'm also going to ride the under. Uh, it's done pretty good for the most part uh, when I'm – Picking a, a, a Pittsburgh game, uh, I think the Bills one was the one that came back and got me. But uh, I'm going to write the 43 and a half under uh, at minus 105, and just to kind of hope that it's a one-sided game. Yeah, well, uh, right now the only one I take on and over would be the Bills, and the uh, uh, and that would just be based solely on the Bills being able to score a lot of points and not necessarily the other team. Uh, like I said, I, I was just a no-go. Uh, I, I thought. You know, all the Eagles players were uh, a little pumped up to uh, uh, much for me to really dive in. I, I don't know what you can do with Pittsburgh. There's no blocking for Najee Harris, so, you know, his number's low enough where you don't want to take that. Uh, the receivers don't get any balls, really. You know, Kenny Pickett has not been the answer. So I can't really grab Pittsburgh. But I thought 10.5 was just too much, so I was just a pass on this game. Uh, like I said, I do have an adult line parlay in case, you know, there is a blowout here. Uh, we'll move to the Bears and Cowboys. Uh, speaking of uh, weird in the season, anyone who had the uh, Bears, a more entertaining team than the Green Bay Packers, uh, raise your hand here. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dallas, you know, Lions game, it, it, it's really hard to judge because the defense was once again uh, ridiculously good. The offense, it didn't turn the ball over, so it didn't give the Lions any opportunities. But, uh, you know, if you told me you get five turnovers and you're struggling to get to 20 points, I still am a little concerned about your offense. You know, it was Dak coming back, but... Uh, 10 points here, I'm just, I can't take the Cowboys in a 10-point spread knowing what I've seen from that offense. Uh, granted, they might be able to shut down the Bears, but uh, the Bears have basically been able to stay in touch with everybody, uh, entertaining or not, offensively. Uh, I, I will say, I, I don't know what the morale uh, of trading Robert Quinn, uh, it, it's, I, I get it, you know, they understand they watch their team it's not going to be a year where they're pushing to really 
well, I shouldn't say make the playoffs because right now everybody <laughs> They're is a game or two behind. play to make the playoffs. Uh, but I don't think they think they can make the playoffs with the talent on this roster. It just, you know, you get a big win on Monday night football versus the Patriots, and then the next day you trade probably your second best defensive player. Uh, seems a little weird, but uh, the 10, I just, I, I really like the Bears getting 10 points here from what I saw with the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, it just... Too many points. I don't think Dallas can put enough offensively on the table from what I've seen so far. What do you make of this game? Yeah, I mean, listen, Chicago, <laughs> uh, they surprised me last week. I wasn't expecting the type of performance that they put up. But, uh, hey, you know, uh, cheers to them. Uh, I've only got a couple plays in this one. You know, you talked about that Dallas defense, uh, sixth overall defense, second in points per game, fourth in passing uh, defense, 20th in rush defense. They, they allow an average of 4.4 yards per carry, which is a little concerning. But they've only allowed two 80-plus yard rushers and only two rushing touchdowns allowed so far this season. So uh, they they seem like a bend but don't break run defense, uh, which is just fine. They're doing they're doing really good. So um, I've only got a couple plays here. One of the plays I had I had to kind of uh, pull an audible on last minute. I had Ezekiel Elliott anytime touchdown minus one fifteen. Now the report that came out uh, injury report came out. And yeah. They say he's doubtful. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write Pollard instead. Uh, at minus 145, the odds are a little worse, but um, you know that he's going to get a bulk of the carries, especially if, uh, if uh, Elliott is out for that one. So I'm going to ride Pollard, minus 145, anytime touchdown. And uh, I've also got C.D. Lamb, anytime touchdown, at plus 120. Uh, and that's pretty much all the plates I have for that one. Yeah, I got two in this one. I mentioned it's Chicago Bears plus 10. I'm going to grab that. Uh, uh, just It seems like too many points for the Cowboys. And then I'm going to get uh, Dak Prescott, over one and a half touchdowns. Uh, with Zeke out, uh, they might uh, do something dangerous and start throwing a little more than they probably yeah, should. Yeah. Uh, it's, so. it, it, it's, it's starting to get that feeling of a trap game, doesn't it? The way yeah, it Chicago does. played last week and uh, I'm not I gonna lie I stared at the money line on this one pretty hard uh I don't know if the Bears will be able to move the ball versus Dallas defense but it's such right now a thin margin for Dallas like if that defense drops just if they have a bad game smidge uh you know, I don't know what they do. It, you know, it, it reminds me a little bit of the Patriots uh, last year, those first 10 weeks when the defense was just outstanding. And then, you know, that last half of the season, the defense started to drop off a little bit, and their season sort of went. Now, that's not to say this Dallas defense is going to do that, but, you know, they just have such a slim margin for error that if it drops at all, I don't know if they can keep up offensively. They have not proven to me in any game this season that they are capable of winning a game that goes over 24 points. I mean, it, I think you saw that last week in that Lions game. They utterly dominated that Lions game, and they struggled to score points the whole game. Oh, yeah, that game, that, they were dom- – yeah, you, you mentioned they they were dominating that game, and every time I looked at the score, I thought – I'm like, wow, there's a chance I might hit this Lions yeah. plus 10 or whatever it was. I'm like, this is crazy. And then, of course, at the end, they ended up blowing it open. But uh, you can't play like that and expect to win, especially against, you know, well, this is Chicago. <laughs> but, you know, when you, go, when you go up against the good teams, you can't play like that and just yeah. assume you're going to win. Yeah, definitely so. So Dak over one and a half touchdowns. Uh, speaking of uh, Detroit Lions, uh, blooms off the rose a little bit here. Uh, the fun run-and-gun Lions have uh, just turned into a turnover machine. Now, I understand, you know, Swift didn't play last week. Uh, they pulled Amar Ross St. Brown, you know, real quick for uh, concussion protocols. So it's now been three weeks without those offensive guys. Uh, but I, I think they had something like uh, their last, I, I think, eight quarters they had like 12 turnovers which uh that that's not good uh no matter what it is and you know defensively they aren't very good so i just i don't know what to make of them miami tua came back like i said they got off to that uh 13-0 start looked pretty good uh, you know it's hard to see if they just tailed off naturally and let the Pittsburgh back in the game, or they sort of called off the dogs to protect Tua here. Uh, but honestly, with the way the Lions uh, cover, uh, you know, they're a man-to-man 
cover team uh, with their corners. That seems like a very dangerous game to play here with Miami. Uh, so I didn't end up taking the uh, spread minus three and a half just because I'm a little scared Miami might do the uh, same sort of thing uh, that they did last week. But the uh, team total at 27 and a half uh, minus 110, I'm going to grab that because I certainly think uh, Hill and Waddle will get loose uh, on these guys if they continue to want to play man-to-man coverage the whole time. Yeah, listen, I agree with you. And I was kind of on the same boat. I was a little timid when it came to looking at that spread. But I'll be honest with you, I'm going to roll with the with the Lions here at plus three and a half. And my only reasoning is, like you mentioned, uh, they seem to really kind of call the dogs off last week versus Pittsburgh. And I think that they might kind of do the same thing to try and prolong uh, to his health for as long as possible. Um, but the addition, there's a possibility that Swift goes this week. Yes. And if he goes and you got St. Brown healthy, uh, then you've got that Lions team that we saw in the beginning of the year that was just putting up ridiculous kind of points. And, you know, they don't have a defense. I mean, they're 32nd overall in defense, 32nd in points per game allowed, uh, 24th pass defense, 31st rush defense. That's uh, realistically the worst defense in the league right now. Uh, so I do see uh, hit, I do see uh, Tyreek and uh, Waddle getting getting loose for some some big gains here. Uh, but I still think that if those weapons for Detroit are there, I feel like they can at least kind of keep up somewhat uh, enough to at least cover the spread here. So I'm going to take Detroit plus three and a half. I'm going to take the over 51 and a half. And that that's a little crazy, especially the way the season has been going. But the reason is, again, I said, I think Waddle's going to go off. I think Hill's going to go off. You get Swift back, you get uh, St. Brown back, both of them healthy. You start putting points up. So I could definitely see this one being one of those games that has the potential to go over. Um, and then I have uh, Tyreek Hill and uh, Jalen Waddle, anytime touchdowns, minus 125, minus 105, respectively. I almost got brave. And almost uh, same game parlayed that, uh, but I decided I'd wait a little bit. Yeah, I got a handful of stuff in this one. I mentioned Miami team total over 27 and a half at minus 110. On that one, I got two over one and a half touchdowns at uh, minus 150. I have golf interception at uh, minus 125 on that one. And then we're going Hill anytime touchdown, Waddle anytime touchdown. Hill's minus 120 on the anytime touchdown for me. Uh, Waddle's uh, even money at plus 100 on the anytime touchdown on that one. I might end up uh, grabbing the Dolphins here at three and a half if I can sort of talk myself into it. I also looked at the first half, you know, sort of line here as well. And maybe they get off to a good start in the first half. And then, you know, second half, they call off the dogs. The problem with that, too, is the uh, Lions run defenses, like you mentioned, uh, got awful. So if the Dolphins start running it, I'm not sure that's really a way to sort of slow down the offense any uh, type. The other thing, though, that uh, makes me a little nervous is the Dolphins defense hasn't forced a lot of turnovers this uh season so you know some of that is just you know luck fumbles going the wrong way dropped interceptions here and there but uh you know first the lions who have a huge problem on turnovers if you don't force a lot maybe they hang around a, a little bit more than you think well you know you said it and, and that's one of the reasons why I, I still think miami can win this game i still think they're gonna win this game uh the only reason that i took the troy plus three and a half uh, is because you mentioned it um miami's defense started off really hot They've gotten mild as the season has gone on. Currently, they're 29th in pressure rate, 22nd in turnover rate, 19th in sacks, 21st overall defense, uh, you know, 23rd in points per game. So the defense has fallen off. Um, and, yes, they can run the ball against Detroit, but I think that with their defense falling off the way it has, Detroit has enough offensive power to be able to put points up, which will cause Miami to be a lot more balanced and force them to basically have to throw the ball. Yeah. Uh, last question on this game. How long a leash do you think Dan Campbell has? I, I mean, it's got to be trimming down here. They're, I mean, they're one of the teams that is actually bad. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, three wins probably right now is what you're looking at. Does he come I back think, next year? I, I, I think it really depends on how you finish the season. I don't think that I don't think you'd fire this kind of coach uh, mid season. Uh, and, and it's simply because he's got the locker room. The guys seem to like him. They seem to rally around him. They really seem to feed off of his energy. Um, I think he's a little bit of an oddball when it comes to being a head coach, um, maybe because he he played and uh, he's got a different dynamic uh, to his coaching style. 
But I don't think you fire a coach like that midseason unless there's a complete meltdown in the locker room. I think if he can manage to at least salvage the season with six wins, I think maybe he sticks around one more year. But that, that season's definitely getting hotter. Mm-hmm. Um, and you keep tacking up losses. I mean, it's only going to get warmer. So Yeah. Uh, Detroit isn't known to really be real aggressive in firing their coaches either. So, you know, like you said, if he w- ends up somehow winning six games, he, he might be back another year. But, uh, you know, players can like him all they want. <laughs> they might want to get him some wins, though. On yeah, that, that helps. <laughs> all right, uh, let's go to the Arizona Cardinals versus the Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota Vikings coming off a bye week. Uh, Arizona won that Thursday uh, night game uh, two weeks ago uh, versus the Saints, where I, I guess they won it. They got two pick sixes right before the half, uh, which tends to uh, turn any game around. Uh, you know, I probably their best win of the season so far. I'd go with that, but uh, it, it's I still wouldn't call it overly impressive. But uh, Hopkins came back, and uh, that would be the one shining light. He came back and still looked like one of the best receivers in the league. So uh, go to the Vikings. You know, five and one. Uh, I will say, I think this game is really, really important for the Vikings here. You know, I, I, I'm taking it. We both assume the Bears are not going to continue to win a lot of games and challenge for this division. We can probably already write off the Lions, and uh, you know that leaves Green Bay. Uh, I think we both assume Green Bay, from what we've seen so far this season, is not going into Buffalo and going to win that game unless magically the offense starts scoring more than 14 points. Or unless the entire Buffalo offense puts on a Green Bay jersey. That's Yeah. Uh, so, you know, if the Vikings win this and Green Bay loses, that's a four-game gap now in the standings in this division. They can pretty much lock this up including a four-game gap with a win already over the Packers. I, I think this is probably the most important game for the Vikings season. I don't think either of us think the Vikings are an elite team, though right now, looking at the NFC, I weapons-wise, they are probably at least near the top if you start listing offensive weapons. So I really think this is an important game for the Vikings. I didn't grab the three and a half. I did grab Minnesota Vikings first half minus three here because Arizona's been so poor in the first half, uh, you know, last Thursday night excluded. Uh, But it was 14-14, and the Saints were driving down to go get the touchdown before the half, before the uh, nice little double pick six run. So uh, I haven't been aggressive enough to take a Vikings three and a half, probably because I value my uh, sanity as I watch them either get behind by a lot or get in front by a lot and then try to blow it. I don't know which would be coming, but one of them would. What do you make of this Vikings-Cardinals game here? Hey, listen, you mentioned it. Uh, this this Minnesota defense, uh, they're just outside the top 10 in a lot of defensive metrics. Um, you know, But they're still not a good defense. 27th overall, uh, 12th in points per game, so they don't give a lot of points, which is pretty good. One of the reasons why they have wins. Um, 28th pass defense, kind of middle of the pack, 14th in rush. Uh, Arizona, on the other hand, not that good defensively. But one thing that you have to try and account for now is the return of Hopkins. Uh, you know, he's – and then Anderson. <laughs> Anderson, I don't know if that's that big of, of a deal, but it still impacts uh, the, when you're trying to read the metrics. Uh, I couldn't I couldn't bring myself to pick a spread here. Uh, I really couldn't. I, I think that Minnesota's going to pull off a win here, and I think that it's a really important game, so they're going to come out really aggressive. But – We've seen it pretty much week in and week out where, as you mentioned it, either Minnesota takes a huge lead and then towards the second ha- half of that game, you know, you're wondering where that lead went to. Uh, or they get down and then they have to fight and claw their way back into the game. So for that reason, it scared me enough to not want to play the spread. But I've got a couple here. I've got a Justin Jefferson anytime touchdown who's ninth in targets in the league uh, at minus 175. Then I got Adam Thielen anytime touchdown minus 110 who's currently eighth in targets uh, in the red zone. So uh, pretty good play there. And then I'm also going to ride the over here. I think this is going to be uh, an offensive struggle. Both of these teams are going to go back and forth. Um, again, pretty high uh, uh, over under here at 49. But 
two pretty good offenses. Uh, the addition of Hopkins uh, makes me feel a little safer about that. But. Yeah, I got a bunch of stuff uh, here uh, in this game, uh, mostly because you mentioned it. Uh, both these pass defenses uh, – really suck and uh you got two of the best receivers in the league so like i mentioned vikings first half minus three uh, we're going with that one kyler murray over one and a half touchdowns even money on that one hopkins over his 73 and a half receiving yards Jefferson over his 89 and a half receiving yards, 131 25 on that. Uh, Jefferson anytime touchdown minus 130. Hopkins anytime touchdown plus 125. And uh, then we're going to do some uh, fun ones. Uh, not quite as big of odds as I would have liked, but uh, two plus touchdowns for Hopkins and Jefferson plus 70 50 for uh, Hopkins plus 425 for Justin Jefferson. Uh, that one's almost to the point where you probably want to skip. Bit 425 for two plus touchdowns, uh, but nonetheless, four to one, you aren't going to complain about it, especially versus uh, this uh, Arizona Cardinals defense. Then we're going to stretch it even farther three plus touchdowns for DeAndre Hopkins and Justin Jefferson. Uh, this one has a little bit more spice to it. Uh, Hopkins is 35 to one for three plus touchdowns. Justin Jefferson is 18 to one for three plus touchdown. 18 to one, still a little shallow when we're talking three touchdowns in a game, uh, but 18 to one, you'll take it. You put your mortgage on it? Uh, I might put my mortgage... <laughs> Maybe on the Justin's Jefferson uh, plus 425 for two. <laughs> All right, uh, that one, a lot of action in because neither team could guard the pass. I'm looking for big days uh, for Hopkins and Jefferson, and it'll probably end up being Thielen and Robbie Anderson or Rondell Moore or something. Uh, all right, let's go to the uh, New England Patriots uh, for the New York Jets. Uh I don't know what to make of the Jets. Uh, I think they had 90 yards passing versus the Broncos. Uh, I'm not sure they completed even 10 passes in the game. Uh, Bryce Hall got hurt early. Carter came in. He didn't run all that well. Basically, their offense was atrocious, except Brett ripping through him. An interception, which uh, led to the touchdown that won them the game. Uh, Patriots looked like they were on a little bit of a streak defensively and offensively, and then... Uh, that went away rather quickly on Monday night. So uh, Pat's two and a half here. I don't really know what to do with this game. I'm curious how you looked at it. Well, honestly, the only way that I could look at this is just based off the performance we got from New England last week and from the Jets, uh, for that matter. It, it, I have to go to the stats. And uh, New England's defense here is middle of the pack. The best way you can attack this defense is – by running the ball. Now, I know that uh, Hall's out this game, uh, or at least they indicated he might be out. No, nah, he's uh, out for the year. He blew out his <laughs> <game>. <laughs> So, uh, I, but I, I know the card didn't run the ball that well. Um, but, uh, again, if you're going to attack this New England defense, it's going to be through the ground. So, just for that reason alone, I'm going to ride Carter here anytime touchdown at plus 120. I know that Robinson's there, but he's just now getting there. So, I don't think that they're going to – really feature him uh, heavily, as heavily uh, this early on. So um, I think if you're going to ride Carter for an in-time touchdown, this is the week to do it because um, who knows what the uh, depth charge is going to look like next week. Uh, my other play here, I've, I'm taking the Jets to plus three. Um, and a lot, I just think that they're just better. And and not by much. It's not it's not like they're leaps and bounds better. But um, just based off the way they've played so far this season, I think that we've gotten a little more consistency, at least defensively, from the Jets who are 10th overall on defense, uh, top 10 in points per game. And uh, they they have a top 15 pass defense, top uh, 15 rush defense. So they're not they're not horrible. Uh, their big issue is the offense. So we'll see if they can get that going. And my last one here um, for this game, I've got the New York Jets first half money line um, at plus 105. Yeah. The spread the spread for that one for, is uh, uh, plus – uh, 0 0.5 yeah and it's minus 115 at that point why wouldn't you take the money line for plus money yeah makes no sense here's my concern about the jets you, you mentioned it their defense has looked pretty good but then you you sort of look at their season they open with the baltimore ravens they got torched by lamar jackson and you know Next, they played jacoby Bursett and the cleveland browns we aren't exactly talking about an offense that is 
going to scorch anybody's earth. Next, they played the Bengals. The Bengals torched them 27 to 12, you know, even in the midst of Joe Burrow having a slow start to the season. And then you go on their run here where they've turned things around and you got the Steelers with the uh, Mitch Trubisky, Kenny Pickett combo of death. You got the uh, Dolphins, which you'd go, oh, wow, Dolphins, light them up. What a way to shut down. But it wasn't two a Dolphins. It was Teddy Bridgewater Dolphins. That's not exactly a scorched earth once again. Then they played the Green Bay Packers. And you go, oh, Aaron Rodgers, way to shut that down. Well, they average about 12 points a game. Everybody in the world is shutting that down right now. And then you go last week to the Denver Broncos and the French Rippin <laughs> led Denver Broncos. So, yes, their defense has been playing very well. I'm not going to say they aren't. But they haven't exactly gone through a murderer's row of quarterbacks. Now, you but might- listen, listen, <laughs> before, before you continue, let me just tell you. Do you realize what quarterback they're playing this week? No, I don't know what quarterback they're playing this week because they so won't it's, it's tell either, me which one's playing. So it's either Jones or Zappi. You know, I'd, I'd be honest with you. I'd feel a lot more confident in my plus three if it was Jones, and that's saying a lot, okay? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, sorry, sorry to cut you off. Continue. No, you're good. You're exactly right. So, once again, they will either be playing, like you said, Mac Jones or <laughs> Billy Zappi, or for some reason both, if Bill Belichick is still, I don't know, in the science lab dicking around for some reason with two bad quarterbacks, uh, you know. So, yes, I'm not going to be real aggressive on the Pats. I will say I do very much want to take New England here. One, they own the Jets. The last time the Jets beat New England was 2012 with Mark Sanchez and Dustin. Is that Rex Ryan? <laughs> yes, correct. Uh, <laughs> Mark Sanchez, the who was the fumble. leading receiver for the Jets in that game, Dustin Keller. <laughs> so, oh, gosh. <laughs> yes. And that was also a playoff game. If you want to stretch it back further, they have not beaten the Jets have not beaten the Patriots since 2010 in a regular season game. Mind you, they're in the same division, so they play twice a year. So, so you're telling me you're telling me they're due. They, that, that's what I'm hearing from all this. Technically speaking, yes, they would be due once every 13 years. They might win a game versus New England. Uh, so, yeah, that pulled me off. Uh, just a little bit here. No <laughs> Just pats. a little bit? <laughs> no pats for me until I, I sort of see what's going on offensively there. Uh, but I can't in good conscience take the Jets because I'm not 100% trusting uh, them uh, quite yet either. So, sadly, that was a long-winded way of saying I have no bets. No Jets. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. I, I completely understand where you're coming from. All right, so let's move to this one. Las Vegas Raiders versus the New Orleans Saints. Uh, Josh McDaniels, uh, last couple weeks, has discovered, you know, if you hand the ball to the running back, who's really good, you might win some football games. Uh, Josh Jacobs has been on fire, and the Raiders have won a couple games to sort of bring themselves back to life here. That being said... This one looks like a tricky one to me. I I know the Saints lost over the week to the Cardinals, but if you actually dig into that game, the Saints actually played pretty well. Like I said, it was those two pick sixes right before the half. Uh, Dalton ended up throwing for like 365 and four touchdowns in the game. So I'm curious how you saw this one with the Raiders going into the Saints. The other thing, like I had mentioned earlier, uh, you know, yeah, you'd probably – in normal circumstances, cross the Saints off and think, oh, you know, it's tank time. Let's get a high draft pick. But they're one <laughs> game out of the division lead. Whoever wins the division gets an automatic playoff spot, despite whatever your record might be. And at this point, everyone in that division might be 5-12. and 12. <laughs> Listen, I, I, you know, you mentioned it. Uh, this Josh Jacobs resurgence over the last couple of weeks has been great for this uh, Raiders team. Um, and, and it's something that we've kind of been asking for. Uh, he's such a dynamic back. He, he can change the game. And, and it seems like ever since they got Devontae Adams there, all they want to do is pass the ball, uh, which I get it. It's Devontae Adams. But, I mean, 
come on, give us some balance here. Um, but yeah, this New Orleans defense is not horrible. Okay, they're they're slightly better in the middle of the pack. Uh, their biggest flaw really is their run defense. You can run the ball on them, which leads me to my picks here. Uh, this is one of the reasons why the resurgence of McDaniels want to use uh, Josh Jacobs again. And the fact that you can run on New Orleans. So I'm going to run with Josh Jacobs over 85 and a half rushing yards at minus 120. I've also got Jacobs anytime touchdown minus minus 165. Uh, I'm also going to roll with uh, Devontae Adams anytime touchdown minus 150, who's currently eighth in targets, uh, second in red zone targets. Um, and I'm going to do another little fun one here. I'm going to take Taysom Hill anytime touchdown plus 100. Uh, and that's simple because I think he's so explosive. He's a real explosive athlete who can score, uh, pass the ball, throw the ball, run the ball. So uh, there's a good chance that he can get in there. I think that New Orleans is going to need him uh, to be part of the mix if they're going to stay con- uh, be contenders in this matchup. Yeah. Folks, this is the reason why we search around two different books for odds. I, too, have Taysom Hill anytime touchdown. You have plus 100. I have plus 175. Uh, that is almost a two-to-one difference on uh, on touchdown odds there. Uh, you know, we, we don't we don't say this enough. I know you mention it every now and then because uh, I'm a little more reluctant to switch sports books. Yeah. You... You have every sports book there is. Yeah. I, I, I kind of stick to a few here. And uh, I sent you a screenshot this morning and I said, is this uh, is this like for a special event or something? Mm-hmm. I'm like, is this really the odds they're getting for any time touchdown? And he's like, yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I'm getting negative anytime touchdowns on certain guys. Yeah. And then I switch over to and, and they're on the plus territory. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, it, on the anytime touchdowns and a couple other things, it's it's huge to have, you know, I, I don't want to cause anyone a gambling problem, but if you're going to do it, <laughs> you know, you might as you're better off having a little bit of your, your, your bankroll is your bankroll. You're sort of better off having it spread around in, into a handful of books and search around for the best odds. You just mentioned it. If we both take Taysom Hill anytime touchdown, I almost double my money on, on this win, and you just win back yours on an even money play. And, you know, I win almost twice what you're winning on that just because I have – I think mine was on DraftKings at plus 175. Uh, but like I said, I I search around. I go DraftKings. I go FanDuel. I go MGM. I go Caesars. I go win. I You know, I look around and find the best odds and then – it's just one of those things where it's on stuff like this. Now the lines are all, you know, pretty much the same thing. Point, most, you know, here and there, but on prop stuff like this, it's huge. Cause like you said, uh, you sent me that thing with FanDuel and I just said, yeah, they, you know, bet MGM usually raises up. Certainly their Cooper cup odds. He's usually 170 on like MGM or on Caesars and on FanDuel, they usually make him even money. So it's always worth searching around. Uh, Cause especially on stuff that's long odds that you don't necessarily know is a hit. It's important to get your maximum value. Uh, so your bankroll uh, increases. Unless of course, <laughs> one of these uh, sports books wants to sponsor us. <laughs> And, and then that's the best sports book, and you should stick to that one. Well, that's quite true. If one wants to throw money my way, I'll shill for whoever. I'm not a I'll take that odds. Uh, so Tyson Hill, anytime touchdown, plus 175. Uh, Chris Olive, uh, anytime touchdown, plus 125. Uh, I'm going Olive uh, over 66 and a half yards. And we're also going to take the Saints plus the one. I, I think this is a tricky game for the Raiders here. I I feel like there's a a little bit of, of a letdown uh, here, and I I still don't trust this Raiders secondary that much. So uh, I, I'm going to go Saints plus the one on this one. All right, uh, Carolina versus the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, I, I got the worst of the Atlanta Falcons last week. Uh, you know, you look at the injury report, A.J. Terrell was a go. Uh, he lasted one play and then pulled his hammy and was out. And uh, then Jamar Chase uh, lit up the Atlanta secondary. So uh, thanks for those injury reports. Dynamite, <laughs> A.J. Terrell is a go. One play later, he's limping off with a blown hamstring. So you live and you learn and you lose some money on the Falcons, but it's the first time I've lost money on the Falcons all year. So Carolina, uh, 
creeps from the recesses of death and uh, tanking and uh, won a nice game versus the Tampa Bay Bucks. So uh, how are you handicapping this one? I will say it was nice to see them sort of take the shackles off P.J. Walker a little bit. He is <laughs> yeah, capable of throwing the football. <laughs> it, it was nice to see them, you know, kind of uh, give him a little extra lead here. But uh, listen, I'm a little upset because that, that Tampa Bay-Carolina uh, game, it kind of muddied the stats. So, you know, I like to look at the stats a lot. Uh, after that game, Carolina is currently 18th overall on defense, 17th in points per game, 19th pass defense, and uh, 21st in rush. <laughs> a lot of that has to do with their previous game where uh, they played lights out. But uh, I've only got a few plays for you here. Um, looking at, at both these defenses, the Atlanta defense is bad. Yeah. Uh, they're they're only – they're only. Too. They're he's, only, yeah, he's they're, and they're not only playing for sure this week. <laughs> <laughs> you sure about that? Yes, I'm sure. Okay, well, their their only bright spot on defense really is their ability to stop the run. Uh, now it's not so much that they can stop the run; it's more that that you can throw on them very easily. So why would you even bother passing the, or running the ball? Um, they are ranked fifth uh, in rush defense, but again, I think a lot of that is muddy by the fact that you can throw on them so easily that most teams are just going to throw the ball on them. Um, I've only got a couple of plays here. Uh, I've got the sh- shortest touchdown of the game at my, at minus uh, at less than two yards, uh, minus 110. I've got DJ Moore, two plus touchdowns at plus 600. Uh, just because again, I, can, I think that it's one of those games where uh, both these teams can look really good against yeah. the opposing defense. Uh, and then I've got a couple here that I was going to save to the end because uh, technically they're parlays, but – Realistically, what happened was that I was getting these picks in prior to the injury report, so I had no props uh, uh, available to me except for these. So I'll just go ahead and give them to you now. I've got Drake London to score and Atlanta to win plus 175. Mariota to score and Atlanta to win at plus 230. Uh, and that's that's all I've got for this game. I got two here. We're going back to the DJ Moore well. Uh, 59 and a half uh, receiving yards over on this one. And also, DJ Moore anytime touchdown at uh, plus 160 on this one. So uh, we're going to wrap ourselves in DJ Moore. I, I really didn't know how to handicap this game because, you know, uh, I think Carolina's defense has been all right. It's hard to really judge because the offense has been so terrible. Uh and I'm getting, I'm a little concerned about the Atlanta secondary without Terrell. Yeah, I mean, you saw it last week. Cincinnati just lit them up. And then I don't want to say bad things about Arthur Smith uh, here, but he, he didn't really seem real aggressive and wanting to throw the football, considering even when he got down, he just decided to continue to run. Uh, you know, I, I just, a, a little of that is complicated because. They basically don't use Kyle Pitts. I, I don't understand why you take him third two years ago and then basically turn him into a run blocker when that's not his skill set. You have Drake London. You have Kyle Pitts. I, I know Mariota has his limitations, but you, you've got to get Pitts more involved. There's literally, like, what would Tampa trade you? For Kyle Pitts right now to have a pass catching huge tight end, it's just. Are you kidding me? It, the, the things he would do in Tampa is just ridiculous. Well, take it to your Rams. What would the Rams give to have Kyle Pitts on that inside to help protect Cooper Cup? It's just, and Atlanta doesn't do anything. They they don't even throw him the ball. It's Wait, part of the issue is also that you know it's not so much about Mariota's limitations as a quarterback. It's the limitations you're adding on to him by not allowing him to play his game because we saw him be successful. He looked really good for the first few weeks. And it seems like as the season's going, they're just slowly, uh, you know, putting him on a tighter and tighter leash. Yeah. So uh, two for more, 59 and a half, 160 anytime touchdown. Uh, This one's a little hard to handicap. I'm pretty sure Malik Willis is is going for the Titans. Uh, But, you know, they haven't. Official, official 
uh, Lee made it an announcement, but uh, the spread certainly leans towards that. Uh, Titans at the Texans. Uh, Texans can't stop the run. Uh, Titans literally half their defense was on the injury report yesterday, so I don't know who's going and who's not going. Uh, you know, like I said, I believe Malik Willis is going to play quarterback for the Titans. Um, I'm not sure he can throw the ball. Uh, so they might be running the option. So I really uh, don't have much for this game because I was sort of wait and see until game time. I- I'm wondering what you did with this one. Uh, I'm on the same boat as you. I mean, I-, I could show you my sheet here. I've got question marks on every single one of these bets, and a lot of it has to do with who's actually going to play, who's not going to play. Uh, as you mentioned, I-, I don't know how successful they'll be throwing the ball uh, if, you know – they won't. With their young... I can guarantee that. <laughs> well, they'll be able to run the ball, though, because yes. uh, they're going up against Houston, who's 32nd in the league in defense, which is worse in the league. Uh, but they're they're gritty, if I can say that about Houston. They're going to they're gonna give you a tough game regardless. Uh, they're not that good defensively, offensively. Sometimes they can get on a good roll here. Um, I'm going to give you my picks, okay? But uh, these are all contingent on who's going to play uh, come Sunday. Um, I've got Tennessee minus two, two and a half, sorry. Tennessee minus two and a half. I've got Derrick Henry over 99 and a half rushing yards, minus 115. I couldn't find a Henry anytime touchdown, not anywhere. Yeah. And I've searched around for a couple of different sports books. So I did find um, a little I think parlay. I saw it at one point in time as 175, like minus yeah. 175. I mean, I've, I've got him. Uh, I found a little parlay with an anytime touchdown for him. So I went ahead and took that one. Um, which is Henry anytime touchdown and Titans money line at plus 135. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to lie. These next handful of games, I was not real huge on betting any of them. They are very uh, lost in the woods to me. Uh, In this one, I got Malik Willis anytime touchdown plus 350. I I do know he can run the ball for sure. Uh, And then they didn't have his rushing total up, which sort of tells me they don't totally uh trust if he's going to fully start or (laughs) they're going to put Tannehill in there like I said the whole Titans defense is also basically on the injury report so I I think this is just sort of a scratch off Willis rushing yards basically whatever they put it at I'm going to take so uh that one you can mark down and then Willis anytime touchdown plus 350 I'm going to grab that one as well Let's move on to the New York Giants versus the Seattle Seahawks. <clears throat> we talked a little bit about the Jags game. The Giants, uh, once again, uh, beneficiaries of good coaching and game management. I I don't know really what to make of this team. Their best patch catcher has 20 catches all season long, <laughs> and he's like a fifth receiver, which might be kind. He might be a practice squad receiver in real life. Um you know, goes to the Seahawks team who somehow, if you had Geno Smith MVP odds, uh, you're bordering on could be a very rich man right now. Um, so three for the Seahawks. I didn't want to go Seahawks three. I thought that was a bit much from what I've seen from the Giants. They just find ways to sort of say in these games. If I was leaning, I'd probably ride Seahawks. But I, I just didn't know quite what to make of this one. Where are you leaning on this one? Uh, I, I was... I'm kind of on a similar path as you are, except that, uh, you know, I have to I have to get back on the on this bandwagon, man. I was riding them all last season when they were bad. Now they're good. I, I got to get on there, man. So I'm going to ride the Giants here at plus three. Um, getting points, I think that they're the better team, at least based off what they've done so far this season. Although Seattle has been very impressive. I do have to say that. Um, what they've been able to do with what they have there is pretty impressive. Uh, I'll give you my picks here for this game. I've got uh, Walker over 78 and a half rushing yards at minus 115. I've got Saquon Barkley over th- over 83 and a half rushing yards at minus 110. Uh, this is due to the fact that Seattle currently uh, is 30th in rush defense, while New York is 28th in rush defense. So both these defenses are bad at, at protecting the run. Um, I've got the uh, the Giants plus three. I've said that. I've got a Walker anytime touchdown. And then I got a Barkley anytime touchdown. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Again, going back to the shop around. Uh, first sports book I look at, I had Walker anytime touchdown minus 225, had Barkley anytime touchdown minus 300. I flipped it over to a different sports book. Same thing, Walker anytime touchdown 
minus 135. Barkley, yeah. anytime touchdown, minus 130. I mean, <laughs> you're talking about more than double. It just it makes it's crazy to me, but anyways, uh, also taking those guys anytime touchdown. Yeah, uh, nothing on this game for me. Like I said, I, I was pretty much a, a pass just because I, I didn't have a good read on it. You mentioned in both rush defenses haven't been great, but honestly, you can sort of say nothing the Giants have done this year has been great. <laughs> they just somehow win football games, so uh, you they know, don't do, allow a lot of points. Yeah, that's that's one thing they're doing. They're doing pretty good, but yeah, you're. They're middle of the pack in pass defense, and they're really bad in rush. Yeah. Uh, You know, Seahawks, I I mean, they're a little bit better on offense. I I will say that. But, you know, how much of the chips do you want to put in the Geno Smith continues to be the third best quarterback of the league bandwagon here? All right, let's move on to the uh, next oddball situation here. Uh, Washington Commanders versus the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, we have a new quarterback for the Colts. Uh, this situation is uh, getting into the uh, danger territory, let's <laughs> say. Yeah. Um, I don't know here. I Once again, I, I got a couple player props, but I don't really know how to handicap this. Sam Ellinger is... <sighs> He's not an NFL quarterback. Uh, They can pretend to like him all he wants, but, you know, basically he's the same thing as a Washington quarterback. He's a gritty guy who will run around and maybe doesn't get sacked, you know, 75 times like Matt Ryan, but he's not very good at throwing the ball. You know, I I guarantee you he will be hurt at some point because he's one of those psycho quarterbacks who – runs and lets himself get drilled so you know i don't really know what to make of this i I, like i said i have a couple rushing i'd probably lean commanders here at plus three because the one thing they've done well uh you know funny enough without uh chase in the there uh is their pass rush has been really, really good up front with the Bama guys. You know, Chase Young's been out, uh, but their pass rush has been extremely good. Their secondary still sucks. Their linebackers are mediocre, uh, but they can really get after the passer. So, I, you know, I lean commanders, but I'm also a little scared this move just means basically the Colts are going to hand the ball 45 times to Jonathan Taylor and just try to win games that way. So I didn't know quite where to go with this. Yeah, I'm on the same boat. I had no idea how to handicap this game, but just based off the moves they were making, uh, Bench and Matt Ryan and stuff like that, leads me to believe that they're going to try and go back to to their bread and butter, which is run the ball, play solid defense. Their defense is not horrible. They're currently fourth in tackles for a loss, 10th in sacks, 11th in pressure rate, ninth in percentage of drives ending in a score. Their eighth overall defense, 13th in point per game. So I can go on and on. And, and they're they're not a horrible defense. We're just it's it just doesn't look right. But, you know, we look at how they played last season, uh, especially the beginning of the season, and they don't look the same. But they're still producing good uh, good stats at least uh, for the defense. So I'll tell you what I've got here. Um, um, just based off the fact that I think they're going to be a really run heavy team this week. Uh, I've got Taylor over 74 and a half rushing yards. At minus 110. I've also got Taylor anytime touchdown at minus 115. Uh, I've got Heineke over half an interception. Now, both these defenses can be pretty gritty, which is one of the reasons why I think a mistake will have to happen here. Uh, and and maybe, it, it, I'll be honest with you, this is more of a, of a throw the uh, dart into the dartboard and just kind of see where it lands. Um, but my last one here, uh, Ellinger under 25 and a half rushing yards. Um, I think this Colts team does a pretty good job at containing the quarterback. Um, it's one of the reasons why they're somewhat successful. Uh, they gave up a lot of rushing yards to running backs, not so much to quarterbacks. So I'm going to write that one. Um, again, I don't know exactly how to handicap this game at all. I'm mostly taking prop bets for this one. It's just I don't know how to read it. I really don't know how to read this game. Yeah. I'm going McLaurin over 50 and eight and a half receiving yards. Like I said, uh, Heineke throws to McLaurin. You saw it last week. He got his touchdowns. Uh, McLaurin, anytime touchdown, plus 190. I'm going the opposite of you. Uh, I'm going uh, Ellinger over the 25 and a half rushing yards because 
you know, I, I watched him his four years in Texas, and that's what he does. It, it's one look, and then it's tuck and, you know, take off. He, he can throw probably a little bit better than Malik Willis. He's nowhere near the athlete, but he, he's a one-look guy. He's a one-look take off, which, you know, I'll ask that's you been, this. I'll um, ask you yeah. this, and then we'll move on. I don't understand. I understand this week because Matt Ryan has a separated shoulder and stuff, but why couldn't they run 45 times a game and then play action 10 times with Matt Ryan? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's what we thought uh, Matt Ryan was being brought in for, right? We thought he was being brought in so that they run the ball heavy, and when they need the quarterback to make a play, they've got a trusty, savvy veteran who can do that. Yeah, I don't understand why they changed their their offensive philosophy as soon as he came in the door, uh, because this wasn't Matty Ice of uh, circa 2008. <laughs> you know, this is 2022 Matt Ryan yeah. uh, on his way out the door, basically. Uh, and no disrespect to him, you know, he's a t- really talented quarterback, but he's not what he was. And, and anyone who tells you otherwise is lying. So No, that, but that's what I just, I get it. You know, he's a statue back there, but if you're, doing what they're basically, I am assuming they're going to do, which is run first down, run second down, third down, try to throw a short pass to the sticks, or I guess have the kid run, which Matt Ryan can't do. But it just, I don't know. what. I'm not coaching, and Frank Reich's going to be fired at the end of the year anyway, so it doesn't really matter. He can do whatever they want. Uh, I can do without the touting that, you know, last year in training camp, they were all impressed because he beat out Jason, Jacob Beeson uh, for the second spot. Uh, you know, That's impressive. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, that really won me over, that he beat out Jacob Beeson. Who you know what? I'm going to take the spread just because of that. Possibly quarterback in the NFL. <laughs> All right, uh, McLaurin, 58-and-a-half. Ellinger, anytime touchdown, 390. McLaurin, anytime touchdown, 190. I'm going over the rush yards because I just assume he'll do the only thing he's sort of good at, which is take off. (laughs) Now, granted, we also have the uh, high-end variance that he gets drilled by one of the uh, Washington Commanders (laughs) linemen, and he's hurt. I don't know who their third-string quarterback is, but, uh, you know, whatever. All right, let's move on to the San Francisco 49ers versus the Los Angeles Rams. Um, I don't have anything on this game. You know how I always like to take the Niners, but uh, my free touchdown in in this game is definitely (laughs) out for sure, so I don't get that one. Um, The Niners were absolutely pathetic last week versus the Chiefs. Now, granted, still still some of their defensive guys were out. Yes. You know, granted – I'm tired of their excuses. It drives me nuts. It's every freaking year. (laughs) Yes, it is. (laughs) So, and honestly, watching Jimmy Garoppolo play quarterback, that freaking interception on the in the end zone was, I, (laughs) you see why Trey Lance was being started into the starting lineup here, people. Uh, So I, I just, I don't trust the Rams even coming off a bye. Uh, you know, they're spitting their own baffling nonsense. Van Jefferson's coming back this week and going to save the, the savior. Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm like, well, that's wonderful. The f- fourth receiver on a good team is coming to save your day. Uh, whatever. So I got nothing on this one because I, I can't take the Niners without Debo. And I don't know what. Players, one, are playing on the defensive side of the ball for the Niners. And I basically just don't trust either of these teams right now. What do you make of this one? Listen, I can give you all the defensive stats, for, you know, for both teams, for the 49ers and the Rams. You're going to think that uh, it's super one-sided uh, when, when you listen to the stats. But realistically, as you mentioned, there's a lot of defensive players out for the Niners. There's a lot of uh, issues going on with the Rams. So I'm not going to read you any stats. I'm just going to go ahead and read you some picks. Now, normally I don't like to take a lot of picks on Rams Niners. Uh, that's a rivalry between me and my brother. I uh, usually just like to watch and get bragging rights, but I've got some for this week. Um, my first one here, I got the Rams alternate line at plus three and a half at minus 160. I've got a Cooper Cup anytime touchdown, which I found on that other uh, sports book, thanks to you, at plus 110. 
Uh, I've got Allen Robinson. Oh, by the way, Cooper Cup, third in the league in targets. Uh, Allen Robinson, anytime touchdown. That's with a Plus, buy, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is this is great. And listen to this one. Allen Robinson, anytime touchdown plus 400, fourth in red zone targets with a bye week. So uh, that that goes to never sh- catches any of those. <laughs> hey, he caught one the other week. Uh, anyways, I, I also had I had Debo Samuel anytime touchdown, but obviously that's a no go now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, he's actually tied for 17th in red zone targets, by the way, if that matters to anybody. Uh, but I'm actually going to go ahead and switch that with a McCaffrey anytime touchdown at plus 105. Um, and my last one here for this Ram game, normally, norm, this is the one to take. Matthew Stafford over half an interception, minus 140. But I'm going to flip it on you. Because there's so many defensive players out for the Niners, I'm going to take the under half an interception. No interception in the game at plus 105. What are my odds that's going to happen? Very low. But I'm gonna I'm gonna be cheering him on. So hopefully, pretty much zero because I've watched Matthew Stafford throw the football. This so season. am I. So am I. But I'm riding him this week. Also, you want to know how I know Allen Robinson doesn't catch any of those red zone you, targets? You take him all take the time him for any time touchdown every week. Yeah, I know. Hey, they target him though. You know yes, that's something. We, we get three jump balls a game in there, none of which are catchable or get caught. All right, uh, let's move on to the, uh, I don't know, they're in a battle with Tampa Bay for the most disappointing team of the year. Uh, Green Bay Packers versus the Buffalo Bills, 10 and a half. I don't know what to do here. Uh, Green Bay right now is awful. They aren't good defensively. They're even worse offensively. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is I don't know. He was a little bit insane in previous years. He's a lot insane right now. There's nobody good on this offensive side of the ball. Uh, going into Buffalo seems like a death stance. I'm going to take the Buffalo minus 11 because they tend to roll up scores versus people and break rules that uh, I shouldn't take teams over. A touchdown, by the way, teams favored by more than a touchdown are 8-16 and 16 so far against the spread this year. That's why yeah, you always I, take the points. Yeah, I, I also read some some weird stat that uh, uh, I believe underdogs were like 60 or 80% uh, in percentage of covering. I can't remember what it was. I, I tried to write it down, but I was driving, so I couldn't because uh, I'm a safe driver. Um <laughs> Yeah, listen, this Green Bay defense, you mentioned this, it's not good. And I'll tell you this, okay, it doesn't look good because I've watched enough Green Bay games to where I completely felt the same way you did. Uh, but just going off the statistics alone, they are seventh overall on defense, 14th in points per game, first number one ranked pass defense. Now, that probably has a lot to do with the fact that they're also 27th in rush defense. Yeah. So uh, that that's probably got something to do with it. But, you know, you got Buffalo at home after a bye. Um, now, they do have Tredavious White is out, I believe, this game, which hurts him a little bit. But you're talking about the number one overall ranked defense, first in points per game, 11 in pass defense, first in rush defense. What are you going to do against this defense? Not to mention the fact that not only are they good defense, like, like a Steelers defense or a Ravens defense of old, they also have a good offense, probably the best <laughs> offense in the league. Uh, it, it's insane, you know, when you really break down the numbers and just look at this Buffalo team, how good they are. I'll give you my plays for this game. Um, nothing too crazy, although I, I really am tempted for the first – well, I can't tell if it's the first time or not, but for the first time to take a over double-digit uh, – uh, favorite here in this one because I think that there's definitely a good chance Buffalo covers this one even at 11 and a half. Uh, but I'm going to take Stefan Diggs over 78 and a half receiving yards. Again, I mentioned Green Bay has a really good pass defense, but it's going to get to a point where I think Buffalo is just better. So it doesn't matter how good that defense is. I think Buffalo's offense is better. Uh, Singletary over 55 and a half rushing yards. I mentioned how Green Bay is 27th in the league in rush defense, so there's a good chance for that one. Um, Stephon Diggs anytime touchdown minus 115. He currently is sixth in targets and third in red zone targets. Um, one that I had a question mark about just because of how low the numbers were was Aaron Jones under 47 and a half rushing yards. And that's because Buffalo has number one rush defense, but 47 seems so low. I'll tell you what, if you want to make a play on that when your best option is to combine the rushing and receiving for Jones, 
and I believe it was at like 57 the last time I looked at it. Uh, if you could still find it at 57, I think that one probably is a better shot at hitting because uh, you never know with the number one run defense. Sometimes they'll catch little halfback passes and whatnot. Uh, Singletary, anytime touchdown, plus 120. And this one I'm torn. I- I'm probably going to need you to talk me out of this one. I have the under at 47 and a half. The last time I took an under in a Buffalo game was against Pittsburgh. And it bit me in the butt. It ruined my uh, my four leg uh, over under parlay. Um, I might need you to talk me out of this one. Man, I'm not sure how many points Green Bay is going to score. So. That's my that was <laughs> see, and that was my my uh, thought process going into that uh, I, that the Buffalo. Only thing I'd worry about is. Uh, Buffalo might score 50. So. That's well, that's what happened in the Pittsburgh game yes, is I didn't I think they're going to be, I didn't think Pittsburgh would put up enough points. Now they were able to score some, but it was really Buffalo's points that just kind of threw that, that over. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I might not take that one, but it's still a play that I might consider. I, I will say this. Uh, Pittsburgh turned the ball over. If you turn the ball over for the bills, they're going to light you up with a ton of points. Uh, Aaron Rodgers will just take the sack and punt the ball. <laughs> so I, I guess you can look at it that way. He, he basically will just run the clock out and be murdered 30 to 14. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just have Bills minus 11. Uh, I got a fun little uh, parlay we'll get to at the end of the show. Uh, next up, Bingles Browns. Uh, no chase in this one. I got Mixon over the 65 and a half, but, uh, you know, I think the Bengals, who looked really good last week, uh, probably are finding their form. Uh, If anyone is built to sort of, you know, you don't match Chase, but if somebody can take the hit, it's probably the Bengals here. They still got Boyd. They still got Higgins. They still got Hayden Hurst. They still got Mixon. You know, they can handle it. Uh I probably would want to lean Bengals here, but Monday night, I just didn't want to take the road favorite. Uh, but Cleveland has basically been awful for three straight weeks here. So uh, I don't know if it was Monday night and I was tired of looking up things and didn't want to take this, but uh, I just, I don't know. It's the road favorite thing, I think, that boggles me, but I can't foresee how Cleveland wins this football game. Yeah, listen, you know, I, I've probably been one of the songs she is uh, defenders of this Cleveland team. I keep saying as long as they can keep pace when they get their quarterback back, they might have a good shot. And, and this is from is someone <laughs> and, and this is coming from someone who doesn't even like their quarterback, okay? Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Uh going talking about this Cincinnati Cleveland game, Jamar Chase, doubtful, probably is not gonna play, right? That's what I'm hearing. Yes. He's okay. gone for three or four weeks probably. Okay, you know, and the thing about this the Cincinnati team is you can run on the Cincinnati team. Um, you know, and you're talking about a divisional opponent who knows this team well. Um, I've got a feeling that that Chubb's going to run the ball well against them. Uh, the question is, can they convert on third and longs? Can they convert on third and mids? That's going to be the big question. That That's really the biggest issue right now is the quarterback position. So don't feel too confident, but I'll give you my place here. I've got Cincinnati in an alternate line at minus two and a half. Uh, at minus 140. Um, I've got Joe Mixon over 65 and a half rushing yards at minus 115. I've also got a couple of uh, touchdown bets here. I've got Higgins, Mixon, and Chubb anytime touchdowns. I don't have the odds for that. They took them down, uh, so I'll have to look into them later, and I'll probably go ahead and tweet those out before the Monday night game. Yeah, uh, like you said, I just got the Mixon over 65 and a half. Uh, I, I'd also uh, pop the Mixon 100 plus yards in this one. Uh, that Cleveland defense hasn't been all that good uh, at all, and it, it just feels like if uh, since he gets up, they'll probably just run the ball and grind this game out. Currently here. 24th in rush yeah. defense. All right, uh, that wraps up all our picks for the week. I, I got a couple parlays I'm going to get to. Uh, we're going to go with the Buffalo special. Three, player, anytime touchdown. Allen Diggs Davis, plus 900 for the triple threat of all three to get a touchdown. Uh, Two-team parlay, anytime touchdown at plus 245. Uh, Derek Henry and Damian Pierce, uh, both teams' rush defense are a little suspect here. Uh, so we're going to take that one. Uh 
two team. I, I mentioned this one. Two team alternate line parlay minus twenty for the Eagles, minus twenty for the Bills, plus eleven fifty three. So uh eleven and a half to one on Bills and Eagles minus twenty. Uh I'm semi confident the Bills can cover this. Eagles, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm a little more uh, skeptical, but uh we'll take the blowouts here. Uh and the two ones I, I actually really like here. Uh, Moneyline Parlay, Vikings, Bills, Eagles. Uh, that's plus 107. And then a two-team Moneyline Parlay, Dolphins, Vikings, plus 125 on that one. So, uh... Yeah, uh, when the Vikings screw me over and uh, blow a 20-point lead in the fourth quarter, uh, you can look at me in the uh, waiver of sadness and wondered why I took the Vikings and trust them to do anything at all. And same thing with me when the Giants fall back to earth. Uh, remember, I wasn't on the Giants bandwagon as they were winning. Now I'm jumping on, so we'll see how that yeah, goes. Daniel Jones is magically going to start fumbling three times a game again. <laughs> all right. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and get all our shows. Winning Daily is out uh, for the weekend on our soccer picks. Don't want to miss any of those. Our college football show is dropped and out. You want to check that one out. You still got a little time if you watch it now to get some of those football games in and win a little bit of money. Watch, subscribe, don't miss any of our shows. Be in the know to win that dough. That's our show, and we're out.